Hare Krishna, World Racers, Sabine and Roger here. Let's read Chapter 9, The Secret of Life from the Bhagavad Gita by Stephen Mitchell. More about this book and the author is in the description. Yeah, but before we dive into this chapter, we must prepare our minds. This is the secret of life revealed by none other, none other than Supreme Lord Krishna. So we got to be ready. We got to set an intention. We have to have the desire to be able to comprehend this most profound mm. wisdom. Please bless our hearts and our souls and our minds that we might understand yeah. the secret of life. Mm, beautiful. Mm. And as always, we are in the middle of a huge battlefield, millions of warriors, human and not human. The conscious were blown. Remember that, like the mm -hmm. celestial conscious. And uh, yeah, yeah, let's keep receiving more wisdom. The Blessed Lord said, because you trust me, Arjun, I will tell you what wisdom is, the secret of life. Know it and be free of suffering forever. Mm. This is the supreme wisdom, the knowing beyond all knowing, experienced directly in a flash, eternal and a joy to practice. Those who are without faith in my teaching cannot attain me. They endlessly return to this world, shuttling from death to death. I permeate all the universe in my unmanifest form. All beings exist within me, yet I am so inconceivably vast, so beyond existence, that though they are brought forth and sustained by my limitless power, I am not confined within them. Just as the all-moving wind, wherever it goes, always remains in the vastness of space, all beings remain within me. They are gathered back into my womb at the end of the cosmic cycle, 150,000 billion of your earthly years. And as a new cycle begins, I send them forth once again, pouring from my abundance the myriad forms of life. Wow. going on is it's happened oh okay well that's good so sabina can't speak anymore she has been struck to silence which is fine so i will just like my mind is blown by this right so just thinking about the fat fastness of all of existence everything emanates from krishna all beings are in him but he's not limited by them and he's not trapped you know within us he's also beyond us he's beyond the existence but he's the very source of all of it right so uh, and then talking about the cosmic cycle 150,000 billion 150,000 billion of your earthly years. That's mind-blowing. So, yeah, and then the cycle begins. I send them forth again, and then they're withdrawn, right? So we know of this creation cycle from other videos that we've watched. And, yeah, it's beyond our, our limited human intellects to really comprehend and understand. But the fact that, you know, Krishna and the Vedas are giving us this wisdom is just amazing so here we go <laughs> these actions do not bind me arjun i stand apart from them all indifferent to their outcome unattached serene under my guidance nature brings forth all beings all things animate or inanimate and sets the whole universe in motion foolish people despise me in the human form that i take blind to my true nature as the lord of all life and death their hopes and actions are vain their knowledge is sheer, delu sheer delusion turning from the light they fall into cruelty selfishness greed but the truly wise arjun who dive deep into themselves fearless one-pointed know me as the inexhaustible source hmm. Mm. 
Always chanting my praise, steadfast in their devotion, they make their lives an unending hymn to my endless love. Others on the path of knowledge know me as the many, the one. Behind the faces of a million gods, they can see my face. I am the ritual and the worship, the medicine and the mantra, the butter burnt in the fire, and I am the flames that consume it. I am the father of the universe and its mother, essence and goal of all knowledge, the refiner, the sacred om, and the threefold Vedas. I am the beginning and the end, origin and dissolution, refuge, home, true lover, womb, and imperishable seed. Hmm. I am the heat of the sun. I hold back the rain and release it. I am death and the deathless, and all that is or is not. The righteous who follow the scriptures strictly, who drink the soma and are purified of their sins, who pray to be taken to heaven, they reach the world of the gods and enjoy an indescribable bliss. Although after eons of those vast and glorious pleasures, when their merit is spent, they fall back into the mortal world. Impelled by desire, they achieve only what will pass away. But those who meditate on me, undistracted, and worship me everywhere, always, I will bring a, a reward that never can be lost. Arjun, all those who worship other gods with deep faith are really worshiping me, even if they don't know it. For I am the only object and the only enjoyer of worship, and they fall back because they cannot know me as I truly am. Worshipping the gods, men go to the gods. Worshipping spirits, to the spirits. Worshipping me, they come to me in the end. Any offering, a leaf, a flower, or fruit, a cup of water, I will accept it if given with a loving heart. Whatever you do, Arjun, do it as an offering to me. Whatever you say or eat or pray or enjoy or suffer. In this way, you will be freed from all the results of your actions, good or harmful. Unfettered, untroubled, you will come to me. I am the same to all beings. I favor none and reject none. But those who worship me live within me and I live in them. Even the heartless criminal, if he loves me with all his heart, will certainly grow into sainthood as he moves toward me on this path. Quickly that man becomes pure. His heart finds eternal peace, Arjun. No one who truly loves me will ever be lost. And those who love and trust me, even the lowest of the low, prostitutes, beggars, slaves, will attain the ultimate goal. How much easier then for ordinary people or for those with pure hearts. In this sad, vanishing world, turn to me and find freedom. Concentrate your mind on me. Fill your heart with my presence. Love me, serve me, worship me, and you will attain me at last. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. We are so incredibly fortunate and blessed to be living on this earth at a time such as this where we have access to these teachings still, right? It might not always be the case in this Kali Yuga that we have access to so much spiritual wisdom and information, you know, yeah, such as this. It's just so profound and so deep, right? And so fortunate not only, you know, for the teachings, you know, but for, you know, what is being expressed here, it's saying that, you know, it's really easy to be freed from samsara, right? Once you understand what's going on, that we're actually spiritual beings, we're all part of God, the Supreme, the One Source, you know, Krishna is, we're all resting in Krishna. And yeah, he's saying that it's easy for those with pure hearts, right? You know, turn to me and find freedom, right? We focus on God. And then that naturally we just surrender our actions. We practice karma yoga. He's saying that whatever you do, you know, just surrender it and you'll start to purify and you'll start, 
you know, evolving into the higher levels of Krish of consciousness, leading eventually to Krishna consciousness, right? Um, yeah, so we're very blessed and we're very fortunate. Uh, and this was an incredibly beautiful chapter. Hmm. And even saying the heartless criminals, right? So anybody that we deem and view as, you know, sinful, they can still, you know, worship God, and then eventually they will become purified. And we see that even with, with Ravana, right, who was a Shiva devotee. And then even he, he became overcome by ego and stuff, but he had incredible spiritual attainments, right? So we all have the potentiality to, you know, to evolve spiritually and eventually leave the material creation and enter the spiritual realms where, yeah, where existence, you know, who knows what that, that's going to be like. It's a whole going to be a whole new experience. Hmm. So let's check in with Sabina. I think she's at a loss for words. That's starting to happen more frequently <laughs> these days, which is good. Yeah, resting in that awareness. So even Krishna talking about, I am the same to all beings. I favor none and reject none. So that's that equanimity, right? He's the source of everything, right? So in a sense, he's the father of us all, right? So of course, he loves his creation and all things equally, right? So very much, the, you know, equanimity, right? Equal to all, loving all. Um, so yeah, that's truly profound. And in that sense, you know, we can adopt that as our mode of being in the world, right? Where we see, you know, Krishna and everything, we develop that equanimity where we can, you know, be compassionate and loving towards all beings, all forms of life, right? Because we're all contained within Krishna, right? So we're all, you know, one in that sense, one family, right? One manifestation, one unfoldment, one creation. Um, so yeah, it's beautiful. And then even, and then saying the offering, he will accept whatever we offer with an open, pure heart, which is why it's so important. You know, we always pray before meals, you know, even just silently, you can say, hey, offer, you know, you this meal, please you know, bless this, this meal, blessed use of our bodies, our minds, our speech, our consciousness, you know, to be in your service, oh Lord, right? Which is quick, but it, you know, it helps, right? Because we got to, adopt that, you know, that flavor of making our life pure and devoted because we're not of the material realm, right? So we stem from the spiritual realm, right? We're spiritual beings and we're trying to return home to our spiritual nature to realize that, you know, that's the goal and the aim and that's going to lead us to the liberation, you know, that we seek and, you know, enter the Krishna abodes, or whichever spiritual realms one desires, right? Mm. Mm. But also, and also touching on, he's the only object of worship, right? So anybody worshiping any deity, right? He's the source of all deities. He's the source of everything. So even though we don't know that we're worshiping Krishna, maybe we think that we're, you know, worshiping a Buddha, or we think that we're worshiping Allah, or we think that we're worshiping Jesus. You know, we're still worshiping Krishna because with that faith and that pure devotion at heart, yeah, he will he will allow that, you know, to happen. And then if you're, for example, say if you're a Krishna, you could very much go to, you know, uh, a Christian heaven, you know, with Jesus and the angels and the saints. That's a possibility, you know, and a reality because everything is possible within the infinite field of Krishna allowing everything to be, right? So we don't need to, you know, discriminate and fight and be angry about other paths and other faiths when we see it from this point of view that, yeah, everything is valid. Everything is Krishna. Good. 
Wow, so thank you so much for joining us for this amazing and wonderful chapter. I loved it. I got some great insights and some more wisdom flowing through my pores and some realizations, and I hope you had the same. Um, let us know in the comments what you think of this chapter. If you had any aha moments, uh, let us know. Uh, remember to hit the subscribe button. It'll help our Bhagavad Gita videos you know, do better with the algorithm so more people can get this wisdom. Uh, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And the most important thing of all is to raise yourself to the level of Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. And thus, we may really raise the world. Hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully Sabina is able to speak once again soon. So uh, we love you and we wish you the best. And peace.